Hello everybody, Walters954. This is the second part of my loops tutorial for flows. If you haven't, check out the first part where we went over this initial baby loop that we have here, which is displaying information for a set of opportunities that we are working with. Really quickly to run through what we have so far. We select the account name. Here's the list that we have generated using loops which looks a lot better than the standard collection output. Now we want to select a primary contact and update all of the opportunities from that list. Let's jump into things. What we need to do is after we have selected our primary contact, we need to loop over all of the opportunities that we have in our collection and update them. Let's add in another loop here. We are selecting the same collection of opportunities that we worked with in the beginning. We are also selecting the same temp opportunity record variable. We can use the same exact temp opportunity variable because it gets set each iteration of the loop. So there's not going to be any leftover data or anything like that. Next, we need to do an assignment. This is where we're going to set the primary contact to the temp opportunity. We're going to use the equals operator because we're setting the contact from the previous screen into the primary contact. Now we are faced with another unknown. Are we going to choose the record choice set or the screen component radio buttons? And we also have a text contact ID. Which value holds the contact ID that we need? We could try them one by one, but we can also add in a quick debug screen once again to check what information we actually have. We're going to use our display text to see what values we actually have. Let's add in the record choice set. Let's add in the radio buttons. Let's add in the contact text ID. Really quickly looking over the radio button primary contact selection, we have this radio button, which has a record choice set. When we look at that record choice set, it's filtered down by the account ID. The choice label is name. The data type of the choice is ID. We are also just for, let's say doubling up, we are storing the ID into a text field. Before we go back to the loop, let's just see what we get. We're gonna get a warning here. We can see that the first are displaying as John Smith, but there's something actually very interesting about the second one. And then the third one, which is the actual ID text field that we used is displaying as the ID. When we look down into the screen variables, we can see that the record choice value is actually the contact ID. So we're going to try to use that one and see what we get. Let's go back to the assignment. We're going to leave this as record choice for now and see if that works connect everything together. Once again, we are using the for each collection. Then let's head straight back into our loop. We are going to do our assignment on our temporary object. Now this will iterate over each of the opportunities setting the record choice contact for the temp opportunity object. You may think that this would complete everything because we're updating our temp opportunity value, but remember that temp opportunity is being updated every single time to the new opportunity that comes in the list. So once we go through this, it's getting overwritten and the value that was there before is not going to be there. 
to make sure that the temp opportunity values are not being overwritten, we actually have to do another assignment to a collection that will get updated. Let's add in our additional assignment. We're going to call this update opportunity list because we're going to be adding to this update list. New resource. We're going to check yes for multiples because this is a new collection that we need to add to. For the operator, let's select add. What we're going to be adding is the object temp opportunity. What this does is stores that specific temp opportunity in the collection update opportunity. So the next time temp opportunity gets updated, we still hold all the changes that were made in collection update opportunity. Now, after the last item goes through, we need to update this new list. If we look at the current update, it's actually on the collection opportunity, and that's updating the original list that we had. Let's hit save and debug and check this out. These contact IDs are for partner tests, so let's go ahead and set it to someone else like John Smith. And it looks like everything went through in the debug log, at least for the updates. Let's take a look at our record refreshing the page to see what actually happened. Here we can see that our primary contact updated to John Smith. There you have it, two different loop examples, one of just displaying the information that we are looping over and another of actually iterating through the object list that we have and updating it. One of the key things with updating objects inside of loops is that after you've manipulated your data with set assignments or whatever you're doing, you need to then add a secondary assignment to add in all of the temporary objects that you've just worked with to a collection that you need to update at the end of the loop. Thank you guys so much for watching. If this video was helpful, hit the like button, comment down below on any other flow topics that you would love for me to go over. I will be updating this in later videos to make this a bit more efficient and removing a lot of the testing screens and debugging screens. I hope this gave you guys a general idea of how I think through and work with flows. And remember, I believe in you.